We're going to be looking at the all-time New England Patriots team today. Overall, this is a team that a lot of people outside of New England or just a lot of people in general hate. No one wants to talk about the Patriots. Everyone hates the Patriots. But the matter of the fact is this team used to be terrible. Like back in the 60s, 70s, they were just not great. Um, they were okay in the 80s. They got to a Super Bowl. Um, and then everything changed in the 90s. They got back to the Super Bowl. It was definitely a team that was okay, but not contenders. And then Tom Brady came, and that's where they just started winning everything. So overall, you can just pretty much trust, really, that this six-round guy came in here and developed a winning culture to a franchise that, for a while, wasn't really that Super Bowl winning culture. So overall, yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty good history. They, they definitely had some pretty good teams. They had some great players around the years. Just nothing spectacular until Brady and Belichick started teaming up. And, you know, they just brought Super Bowls along with some other great characters around them. Anyway, the New England Patriots were established on November 16th, 1959, 57 years, pretty much. Their first season, though, was 1960. They play and are headquartered. They play in Gillette Stadium, and they're headquartered in Foxborough, Massachusetts. They are a part. They were a part of the AFL from 1960 to 69, and particularly in the Eastern Division from 60 to 69. The National Football League then came calling. They merged, and they became that and part of the National Football League from 1972 to now, of course. Became a part of the AFC from 1970 to now, and they've been in the AFC since 1970. So overall, this is a team that really not much has changed for them in terms of moving around. Their colors are navy blue, red, silver, white. And the owner, the chairman, the CEO is all Robert Kraft. The president is John Kraft, Jonathan Kraft. And the general manager, pretty much, and the head coach is Bill Belichick. The team history looks like this. From 1960 to 1970, they were the Boston Patriots. 1971, they were the Bay State and then from 1971 to now, the New England Patriots. Pretty much, they have won five league championships, which is pretty much five Super Bowls. They won in 2001, 2003, 2004, 2014, and 2016. They are nine time AFC champions 85, 96, 2001, 2003 to 4. 2007, 2011, 2014, and 2016. They are also 19 time division champs. In the AFL East, they won in 63. In the AFC East, they won in 78, 86, 96, 97, 2001, and from 2003 all the way to 2007, then again 2009, all the way. To 2016. They've had been in the playoffs 24 times, 63 in the AFL, NFL, 76, 78, 82, 85, 86, 94, and then uh, 96, 97, 98, 01, all the way to 07, and 09, all the way to 2016. So overall, They've played in from 60 to 62. It's called Nickerson Field. Then from 63 to 68, they played in Fenway Park. 69, they moved to Alumni Stadium. 70, Harvard Stadium. 71 to 2001, Foxborough Stadium. And now, 2002 to now, Gillette Stadium is the name of the stadium they play in. Overall, yeah, this is a team that um, has got a long time history. Been around for a while. Definitely people hate them, but I feel like they hate them because of their success now. Their entire history is definitely not winners. They've had some really, really down years. So this is definitely an organization that went from the bottom all the way to the top, to be quite honest with you. And uh, yeah, five Super Bowls is a lot. It's one of the top in the NFL history teams. So. All right, so I thought I would try something different. I would not put the names because it's kind of ruining the kind of picturesque kind of feel, I guess. I don't know if you guys like pictures instead of words covering up their numbers and stuff like that. So I'm just going to try that. 
see how you like it. If you don't, I might switch it up or whatever. Might as well just switch it up a bit. Um, I'm going to say the name pretty, pretty slowly so you guys can understand. QB is Tom Brady. Okay, so Tom Brady will be the man in charge. Honestly, there's not much I can possibly say to him for me to be like, well, this is why and why. You, for the most part, people should know why he's going to be the QB. Five Super Bowls already says enough. What he's done for the organization is that's already, that's already like, that's just, that's an old conversation. Honestly, he's done everything for the organization from being a guy that people thought should be drafted to a guy that's, you know, a future Hall of Famer, uh, first ballot, and overall just one of the, if not the best quarterback of all time. That's just, how do I put that into words? Like, that's it. Like, that should be it. He is the quarterback of the New England Patriots. He's just that important to this team. So, yeah. Now I'm going to roll with fullback running back formation on this thing, and I'm going to have Jim Nance as the fullback. I think he's going to help wonders for Brady already. Brady, the thing that he's done has been fantastic. I just know, all time-wise, they're going to need a running game. I think in the past, they haven't needed, they didn't really need a running game for them to be super successful, I guess, you know, in some Super Bowls. Um, they definitely didn't need him. They just needed Brady's arm, right? But I think running game is very important. Everything is important, I think. To have a running game for Tom Brady, it's, it's dangerous because now he's able to give it to a guy who doesn't have to pass all the time. And when he does pass it, that's scary. So overall, yeah, Jim Nance is going to be the man, in my honest opinion. He is the man for the fullback position. He's a guy that can rush for over 1,500 yards. He's a guy that can catch the football, and he's a guy that can block. He's a big dude, and I think he's going to be exactly that, honestly. Um, yeah. Um, played in the AFL, actually. He was of 65 all the way to 73. Um, but he was for seven years in Boston slash New England Patriots. So overall, you know, he knows this. And he's two-time Pro Bowl. He's a two-time All-Pro. He's going to do fantastic things as a fullback in this organization. New England's running back is going to be Curtis Martin. Okay, so this is his second time on this all-time list. He was a part of the Jets one. Now he's going to be a part of the New England Patriots. And... Pretty much it's because he's played enough there and he's had enough success. And he's really, he's given New England a lot of success, you know, honestly. Because of him, I mean, you're looking at, you know, because of Bledsoe, yes. But because of Curtis Martin, they got a pretty good running game. They got them to the Super Bowl, you know. And yes, his entire career mostly is pretty much a jet. He only played three years in New England. But the thing that he did was just, in my opinion, he was really valuable. A guy that had... Like back to back, fourteen rushing touchdowns. A guy that can, you know, have around like forty receptions per year. A guy that honestly can score. A guy that can run, and a guy that can be very, very effective come playoff time, and is one of the best. That's why he is a Hall of Famer. I mean, he is one of the best. So, in my honest opinion, yeah, Curtis Martin is a fantastic addition to this team. I think having him as well as Nance in there. I really like this back to you of New England. Now, wide receiver is going to be Stanley Morgan. He's going to be one of the receivers on this New England team. Um, of course, I know Edelman has been fantastic. I just I, I need to see more years from him out there in New England for me to honestly put him as the top receiver of all time in franchise history. Is, you know, his value is definitely, of course, up. Um, it just right now, as it stands, he needs a few more of those productive years for me to put him on here. I just think Stanley Morgan, a guy that played in the 70s, a really big part of the offense, you know, 13 years in New England. And he, he did he gave the organization his all. And I understand if you want to look at it and be like, well, he didn't, he only had like one year where he had 80 plus receptions. I understand. It's just the guy is fast and the guy can run. And he can catch. He, he actually hits a lot of receiving touchdowns. So overall, I mean, you got to put this guy in here. He had over 500 grabs for this new franchise. You know, it does show that he actually can be a reliable target. And, you know, honestly, Stanley Morgan with Tom Brady, I don't really doubt that combo. I think that combo would be pretty good. Now the other wideout that I got is Westbrook. 
Wes Welker is one of the, I would say, underlooked guys in really the history of the game. A guy that, um, honestly, even before, you know, you had, before you had kind of, you know, his Miami days, weren't that great, right? But he was a young guy, right? He comes into this New England team. Becomes an All Pro, he becomes a Pro Bowler. Obviously, with a lot of help of having a guy like Tom Brady, but he should be having a lot of credit. I mean, he honestly is a guy that's had a hundred plus receptions before. He's had MVP likes numbers, honestly for you know for a dude that was undrafted. I mean, this is fantastic numbers. This is a guy that put up some fantastic things that I really believe. 900 receptions in his career. I really do like that. I really think he has the ability. And I think he should be credited with being a Hall of Famer very, very soon. Um, so that's my honest opinion on it. Um, I really do Wes Welker. Really dig him. I think him and Brady again connection. Yeah, that'd be very scary to see. I think um, there's a guy that's led receptions before, like three years, three years leading in reception, so, and he's a long-time New England native, definitely like an Edelman kind of guy, but Walker just has more experience, he's played there a little longer, so, you know, he's had bigger numbers right now, um, so, I mean, I gotta put Wes Walker out there, I think that connection would be very, very, very scary. Tight end, Rob Gronkowski, he will be the man up there at tight end, why? Because he's one of the best tight ends of all time, and really, he's not even 30, and the guy has a lot of great numbers to make him one of, if not the best, greatest tight end of all time. I think that's a little a bit of an overstatement, though. I feel like people really give this guy credit, like, oh, yeah, he's he's the best tight end of all time. Honestly, he's great. Yeah, he's fantastic. I don't see him as the best tight end of all time, though. I feel like he just needs a long, long thing long career to go, honestly. I mean, Tony Gonzalez, you're kind of disrespecting that guy. You're just disrespecting Ozzie Newsom. You're disrespecting Tony, um, Tony Gonzalez. I already said him. Jason Witten. Um, I know some people might not like Jason Witten, but uh, I think he's a great predator for the Cowboys. I think a very big spark for them. You know? And, I mean, honestly, there's definitely some guys you got to look out there. You're like, whoa, okay, well, right now, like, right now, Gronk, I mean, yeah, he's He's a beast for sure. He's, he's a beast. He really is. But he's not. Right now, Kelsey and Olsen, they're coming for his title for being the best tight end. So he's got to step it up, in my honest opinion. Gronk's got to step it up, or else I will be putting him lower on the countdown next year. But anyway, Gronk, though, overall, fantastic. Big body. Needs to stay healthy. As long as he stays healthy, that's all that matters, in my opinion. I mean, Brady to Gronk, it's always a great, fun thing to see. So I believe in that connection. I believe in that kind of tandem. I think Walker Morgan, Gronk, that's a really good duo of receiving cores, as well as having a Mer Martin and a Nance that can you know, also catch from the backfield. I look think that's a solid offense right now. Now we got to go with this line, and I actually like this New England line. We're going to start with left tackle Matt Light, very big focal point in terms of what he did for the Brady days. I mean, he was able to be a part of, some really good teams, which included that almost perfect team of the New England Patriots. So, overall, you know, fantastic. A guy that came in in 01 and protected Brady's back all those years. You know, I mean, finishing in 2011, being that 10 year career overall, he was, you know, he was able to be a three time Super Bowl champion. He was able to be a three time Pro Bowl and All Pro. So, I mean, this is, this is a guy that honestly, you shouldn't be worried about in terms of if you're Brady. I think defensive ends definitely should be worried about him. Matt Light is a fantastic lineman. And I think him with the pairing of one awesome Hall of Famer, that's a scary line of that side you know, as we go along with the other entire line. Left guard, John Hanna, that guy with Light is, whoa, that's a dominant, dominant left side. John Hanna is probably top three best guard of all time. So, I mean, honestly, in my opinion, you know, if you don't know John Hanna, um, 
that's okay, obviously, people aren't supposed to know everything, but you should know a guy that, if you're a football fan, you should know seven-time All-Pro, nine-time Pro Bowler, a guy that in the 70s, 80s, just he was just there. He was a, a dominant guard that just was phenomenal to watch, very, very fun to watch, and yeah, it's John Hanneman. You got you to gotta put this guy on your line, him pairing up with Matt Light, and that's that goes a long way. That would definitely go a long way with those two fellows there. Now the center is going to be Dan Coffin. Dan Coffin, impressive guy, definitely impressive guy. Uh, drafted them, drafted him in 2003. He ended up being a Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champion, a guy that played nine years for New England from 2003 to 2011, and a guy that pretty much, for the most part, made every single snap, every single game count. And a guy that is a wonderful leader. I think having Hannah right there, along with Light and Coffin right now, just that side of the line is very dominant. It's very scary. I don't see Tom Brady getting hit that much from that side. I just feel like Brady should feel like, okay, I'll be fine. Because honestly, that's, in my case, that's what's going to happen. He's going to be fine. Now, right guard, Logan Mankins. Now, Logan Mankins is a guy drafted in 05 and was a first round pick there. And they didn't, at that time, they drafted him because they needed another guard. They needed to have that line be definitely in terms of improvements. And uh, I mean, he got to a Super Bowl. He got to a Super Bowl twice, actually, both losing. So, no, he did not experience a, a win because his two year. Uh, career that he ended was as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. But overall, this is a guy that, when he was a part of the New England Patriots, never missed a game. Like, pretty much never missed a game. So this is a guy that can definitely, definitely be a great parent to John Hanna. I think Logan Mankins definitely can learn a lot from John Hanna. And I think that those two can be, in my opinion, those are one of, one of the many. There's a lot of teams, but one of the few awesome and one of the best duos, I would say, in terms of guard play. So, it's going to be something to, to look at. Uh, I just, I really, I think they'll, he'll be fine. I think Brady's definitely smiling right now um, with this line that he's going to have, honestly. Now, right tackle will be Bruce Armstrong. Bruce Armstrong is a right tackle for the New England Patriots, six-time Pro Bowler. Played for New England his entire career from 1987 to 2000. Played his heart out. Got to the Super Bowl for them in '96, and uh, pretty much had a streak of from '93 to 2000 where he did not miss a single snap. A single snap. This guy played over 200 games. Started over 200 games. This is an, a great leader. To have in this line. This is a fantastic big bodied guy that's going to get it done. And I believe that having Bruce Armstrong, Logan Mankins, Dan Coffin, John Hanna, Matt Light is definitely one of my favorite lines of all time NFL wise right now on these lists. This is a dominant line. I think this line can do super well. And I think I don't see Brady getting pressured as much, if not at all. 